This morning, I'd like to review before Mass the Sanctus, or the Holy, 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 since we are singing it in Latin. Take into account our iniquities. Who would withstand a test? But forgiveness abides with you, O God of Israel. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Oh, let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleadings. O oh Lord, if you were to take into account our iniquities, who would withstand the test? But forgiveness abides with you, O God of Israel. My life flows on in endless song A poverty's lamentation I hear the real, though far off him That pales a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm But to that rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It sounds and echoes 
But though the tempest round me roar, I hear the truth it liveth. But though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my most strong, but to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. What's up with all that Latin, Josh? I mean, didn't Vatican II tell us to dump all that Latin? Actually, it didn't. What Vatican II asked us to do was to bring some of our day-to-day -day language into the Mass so that we would more easily understand the prayers, be able to pray along with them, understand the readings, understand the prayers. We get to the Eucharistic prayer and we understand it because it's in our language. But the Church also asked that we retain some parts of the Mass that remind us that the Catholic Church isn't just in Monroeville in 2020, it's throughout the whole world and has been there for two millennia. And so Vatican II asked us to retain a little bit of Latin, retain a little bit of Greek, right? Every time we say Kyrie eleison, we're speaking Greek, right? And so what we're doing is just adding a little bit of Latin to remind us of the history of our church. We are a church that stretches across millennia. And so we will sing the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, Holy in Latin. We'll sing the Lamb of God, the Agnus in Latin. And in that, we will remember that this church is bigger than just one mass and is one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. One other thing that I, I wanted to bring to your attention, you can tell the church looks a little different, right? The bishop asked us to try to be able to have more people in the mass, and so um, we're, we took down some of the things that were kind of keeping us just on the sides of the pews. The idea, though, is still that in your individual households, you should remain socially distanced from each other. So it kind of goes like this. If you can do this, and the person next to you can do that, and you can shake hands, and you're not from the same household, you probably need to uh, look at the social distancing a little bit more. So in doing what we're doing, we're asking you to actually take care of that, to care about the social distancing, make sure you, you follow all those things. Um, in, in addition to that, we're also going to go back to communion at the regular time of the Mass today. But again, we can't do two lines down the center, right? Because if there were two lines down the center and you did like this, you'd be holding hands with the folks next to you all the way down. So what we're going to do, it'll look a little bit different, but it's been going smoothly all weekend. What we're going to do is um, I'll come to this center section first, and Deacon Rick will go to the side section first. So we'll get those two to go. And then when we're done with that, um, Deacon Rick will go over to that side, and I'll distribute communion to the center here. Um, then Deacon Rick will go all around. If you have mobility issues, if you can't go or get around, that's okay. Stay in your seats. Deacon Rick will come around to you and give you communion if you have mobility issues. It's just going to look a little bit different. been going smoothly. Um, you know, we're making those changes, but we're keeping the RSVPs because it gives you a chance to be assured that your space is saved. It gives us a chance to do the contact tracing. Um, keep the RSVPs. We're keeping the live streams and the distribution of communion, but we're just trying to listen to what the bishop has said and try to get more people into Mass. We're seeing a small uptick in the numbers, but you know, every time that we can safely bring more people to church, it's a wonderful thing. So now let's enter into our prayers together, our worship, and our celebration of the sacrifice of the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold, our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall. the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you lord (laughs) 
Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent out servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed and everything is ready, come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to the servants, the feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his feet, his hands and feet, and cast them into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ. So it really is a relief to return to the distribution of communion at the normal time. I, I don't know about yins, but boy, it just felt weird for me, right? You finish mass, then you do the distribution of communion. Um, it did have one benefit, though. Standing up here looking out, it was always depressing to see some folks just bailing, like immediately. I got my communion, I'm out the door, see you next week. And so when you did distribution at the end of mass, nobody left right after communion, at, before the mass was ended. It was good. But uh, I've noticed already this week there are people who receive their communion and head out the door. I promise you. We'll finish well before the start of the Steelers game. Go back to your pews. Stick around after communion. Say a little prayer. Join us in that final prayer and in that final hymn, please. All right. I, I want to, to confess something to you. Clearly, I don't pay attention. Um, this is going to be the ninth presidential election that, that I'll vote in, and somehow I just totally missed this dynamic. I must have been out in left field or something. Um, you know, when there are presidential debates, there are folks who get together for a watch party for the debate. Did, did, did you ever see that before? I, I just, I never noticed it. I, I don't know. I guess, I, I, I don't know what goes on. I've never been to one. I guess you all go to a restaurant, you hang out, and when your candidate gets up and talks, you cheer and holler, and, and when the other candidate gets up and talks, you boo and you hiss them, I, I guess. I don't know. But I, I just happened to notice on TV they had these watch parties. Well, let's try a thought experiment. Let's suppose that you are all about one of the candidates in the election. Doesn't matter which, that you're just all about them. I mean, you got the yard signs out there, you eat, sleep, and breathe your candidate, and so you decide, I'm gonna put together a watch party for the debate. So you go to a restaurant, and, and you reserve a room, and, and you plan out the menu for the night, and, and you go and you get all that uh, cool little stuff, you know, like the bumper stickers with the candidate's name and, and the campaign buttons and silly little hats with slogans on them. And you're all set and you're all ready and this is wonderful. People are coming in, you're greeting them, you're handing them the buttons, it's wonderful. And then a guy walks in wearing the other candidate's shirt. What do you do? Chances are. You would go up to the guy and go, look, um, 
I don't know if you missed this, but this is a watch party for candidate X. You can't come in here wearing stuff for candidate Y. Chances are you would, in a very polite way, show him where the door was, right? Hold on to that thought for a second. Let's turn to our gospel readings. Let's turn to all of our readings. In our readings today, and sometimes this gospel looks a little bit confusing, but I promise you what Matthew's done is put together an amazing narrative telling us what Jesus is all about. In our readings today, the whole context is a wedding feast given by the king. We see it in our first reading in Isaiah, right? I mean, he's inviting you to his place, to his mountain. Come, eat and drink to your fill. You don't have to pay. Just come and be part of this feast. And Isaiah is making this invitation to all of the people of Israel, to all of God's people under their Mosaic law. Isaiah is giving God's word. Come to my feast. And then we get to Jesus in our gospel. And Jesus, well, he's a master storyteller. He's a master teacher. Because when he tells parables, he talks to people in terms of contexts that they know, familiar themes, things they know about and recognize. For us, it's kind of hard. But for the people of that day, when he starts off talking about a wedding feast, well, that's the start of a comforting epic. It would be like us hearing, once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was a beautiful princess, right? You hear that and you relax. Oh, okay, we're getting ready for a good story. And so Jesus starts out. There's a king who's having a wedding feast. And the people of that day, because they knew their Bible, said, aha, I know this story. This is the story from Isaiah. Jesus is going to tell us a story about God inviting us all to come to this wonderful feast. And they're all settled in. Wonderful. Good story. Come on, Jesus. Give us a good story. And Jesus goes, and you know what happens when he invites them? They blow them off. They don't come. Worse than that, not only do they not come, they beat up the messengers who come to give the invitations. They beat them. They kill them. Now, at this point, if you were the people Jesus were talking to, I think they identify them as the scribes and the high priests, right? If you were those folks, you would be sitting there waiting to hear, and you would be like, wait, 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 Jesus, you're getting the story wrong. But see, what Jesus is really doing here is telling them history. Their history in the past what's going on in that moment, and what will happen in the future. He is such a great storyteller that he's able to give them the entirety of salvation history as if it were a simple story that they could listen to. And so he tells the story. Look, back in the time of Isaiah, God invited you to this feast. And you didn't come. And you beat his messengers, the prophets. And in fact, I have come to announce the feast and you're going to put me to death. And Jesus continues his story. And when the king saw that this happened, he went to those ungrateful people and burned their city to the ground. Biblical scholars say that here Jesus is predicting exactly what happened in 70 AD when the Romans came in, sacked Jerusalem, literally leveled it to the ground. Right? There's no temple anymore because the Romans destroyed the city. So Jesus is telling them their past, telling them their present, and predicting for them their future. And one other thing he's doing. You remember in Revelation where they talk about what's going on in heaven? When we are all at God's holy mountain, there's the wedding feast of the Lamb. Look at what God has done for us in these, in these readings. In Revelation, we know what is to come, the wedding feast of the Lamb, the Lamb that was sacrificed for us. And Jesus is saying, not only is that what's going on in this story, but even way back in the time of Isaiah, God was pointing to the wedding feast of the Lamb that was to come. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? And if that were all that there were to the story, Hey, God invites you, but if you say no, God now invites everyone. 
because that's Jesus' message, right? It used to be just the people under the Mosaic Law, but Jesus came and said to all of us, I invite all of you to the wedding feast of the Lamb. I invite all of you to salvation. And if that's all there was in this story, that would be great. But there's a little bit more as well because Jesus isn't done telling the story. He says, now, all of the people came in from everywhere for this wedding feast, and he looks at one guy. Do you mind if I pick on you today? Last time you sit in the front row, right? Yeah, I know. And he looks at one person and says, where's your wedding garment? What? Everybody else here is dressed in their wedding garments. You aren't. What's going on here? You see, that is the political rally part of the story, right? That is the person who came to candidate X's rally wearing candidate Y's stuff. They heard the invitation, but they didn't come prepared for what was to happen. And this is what Jesus is telling us today. In the parable, he says, where's your wedding garment? And he doesn't have it, and he's thrown out of the feast. Because, see, our faith isn't just, hey, stand up, do an altar call, pray a Jesus prayer, and you're done. You're good. It's over. You're set. No. What Jesus teaches is that once you hear the invitation of God, once you accept the invitation of God, now it's time to live it out. Now it's time to put on that wedding garment. Now it's time to put on Christ and wear your faith proudly everywhere you go. The message is, It's not just enough to hear the invitation and say yes, but you also must prepare. You also must live it out. To be a Christian, you act out your faith. We sit here every week and we pray. And we pray to our God who died for us so that we might have life. And then, if you just go out and don't give it a second thought until you go, oh, Sunday morning again, time to go to church, and you are the person without the wedding garment. Jesus, what Jesus acts of us is not only that act that says, yes, I accept the invitation, but then go out and live it every day. Go out there wearing Christ so that everyone can see in the things that you do, in the things that you say, in the person who you are, wear that wedding garment proudly. Let them see that Christ is part of your life. Let them see that this belief that you're showing now, as we sit here and celebrate the Mass, let them see that it doesn't just end here. It has to be part and parcel of what you do 24-7-365. Because if not, then you haven't prepared. You haven't set your faith in motion. James talks about it in his epistle, remember? Faith with works. Show me real faith. I'll show you the works that go along with it. Jesus talks to that audience, and he talks to us as well. Have you heard the invitation of God and accepted it? If you're baptized, you have. Great. But today, Jesus asks you, won't you also prepare? Won't you also put on that wedding garment? Won't you also put on me and take me out into the streets with you? Won't you, in addition to saying yes, live it in everything you do this week? Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the righteous He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our gospel today, Jesus bids us to be ready, be prepared, and then take that preparation and put it in action. Well, get ready. It's time to put it in action. Let's pray now, lifting up our friends and neighbors and asking God to give them the things that they need this week. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strength as we nurture a culture of healing in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawmakers, may God's grace direct their hearts in proposing laws that protect the life and rights of all people, including those yet to be born. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, may they know the healing power of Christ, who is our divine physician. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Lord God continue to help us speak the truth in clarity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For all who have died, especially Linda Serrano, Victor Caruso, Charles Rossi, and Linda Miller, may they find a place at the banquet of life in the eternal kingdom let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charles Porter, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers this morning, and in your mercy, answer them. Grant us the wisdom to hear your call and to respond to it, and the courage to live it out in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The King of Love, my Shepherd is, whose goodness fills me never. I nothing I 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
made a sacrifice of our reconciliation. We pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under my, my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall, shall be healed. Please join us in the reciting of our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Remove from me all scorn and contempt, for I have kept your commandments. For your law is the object of my meditations. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees, with all their hearts they seek him. Remove from me all scorn and contempt, for I have kept your commandments. For your law is the object of my meditations.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I, I think contentious might be a mild way of putting what this year's election cycle has looked like. You know, it's rare that you see so much anger, so much ill will, so much bad behavior on the part of folks who, for every rest, you know, every other three years before the election seem kind of normal. Maybe one way that we can put on that wedding garment this year, one way that we can live out our Christian identity is that even when we talk politics, even if we think there's a candidate who's dumber than a bag of hammers, well, maybe we just treat them and each other with a little bit of respect. After all, it's just an election. You have to live with your neighbors after it's all over, right? So put on that wedding garment and go through this election cycle showing off your love of Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.